Welcome back to these daily reflections through Advent. And today we have a bit of a change. We're starting to look at the O antiphons. More of that in a moment. First of all, let's open with a different prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're so grateful that you're walking close with us, Lord. In this final week before Christmas, please help us to catch a fresh glimpse of who you are, to open ourselves to you in new ways, and to welcome you more fully into our lives. Come, Jesus. Our hearts love you and long for you. Let's have a moment of quiet as we become aware of God's presence. Today we're looking at three scripture readings, the first from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and power, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and his delight will be the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by outward appearances, or reach a verdict based on hearsay. She reaches mightily from one end of the earth to the other, and she governs all things exceedingly well. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. So today we begin our final week of Advent together. It's quite exciting. And this week we'll be joining with the monastic world as we focus our reflections this week on the O Antiphons. So since at least the 8th century, and many say it was earlier, maybe the 7th century, but it was definitely formalized in the 8th century and on, onward from then, Monasteries have included these great O's, as they're often fondly called, uh, in their evening liturgy for Vespers. So in the days from the 17th to the 23rd of December, each day has a slightly different liturgy for each of the O antiphons. It brings me great joy today, in honesty, to know that we're not alone in our reflections that every monk and nun all around the world and all who have committed themselves to the religious life are all thinking about these same words that we're thinking about. And that's been going on for many centuries. Each of the O Antiphons focuses on one of Christ's titles. Titles that were given to him in biblical prophecy, lots of them based on Isaiah, but not just Isaiah. So they're Old Testament prophecies of this is what we should expect Jesus to look like. So they all declare different aspects of his character. The antiphon then calls on Jesus to come and to fulfill the promise that was made through that prophecy. With a great sense of longing, each antiphon then prays, O oh, come. I'm really pleased that I have Sister Mary Leake joining me for our reflections this week. And she'll help us as she puts a monastic perspective on each of the O antiphons and, and the whole set of them. So as we begin, I've asked her to introduce herself. Hello, everybody. I am Sister Mary Luke from the Community of the Holy Cross at Kostok. We are a Benedictine community, which has a special thing about the liturgy. That means the, the daily prayers that we all say, we go to church seven times a day. Some of the offices, as we call them, are quite short, about 
seven or ten minutes, and others are up to half an hour long. Thanks, sister. As the week unfolds, I know that you have a few more things to say that will help us with actually the whole set of these great O antiphons. But I wonder if you could start us off by introducing the first one for us today. The first one, beginning on the 17th of December, is O Wisdom, O Sapientia. And roughly translated, it says, O holy, O wisdom, O holy word of God, you govern all creation with your strong yet tender care. Come and show your people the way to salvation. Okay, so we're thinking today of Jesus coming as wisdom. The scriptures that we read today show us where this prophecy and prayer are based. Is there anything that springs to mind for you from these scriptures? Now, this immediately gets us thinking of where wisdom is portrayed in the Bible. For instance, Proverbs, wisdom has built her house, she has set up her seven pillars, she has slaughtered her beasts, she has mixed her wine, she has set her table, and then she calls everybody to come in and eat. And this immediately makes one think of the Eucharist, that God calls us to, to eat with him and to eat of him. And if we are made his body, then we are actually sort of eating each other. We feed each other. Um, but all of this is a longing. Please come. Ah, that's a beautiful thought. We're invited to sit at the table with Jesus in the Eucharist who is wisdom personified, and to eat of the incredible fare that's on offer. Hmm. I wonder what wisdom we might need from God in our lives right now. God has gave, given us wisdom, all of us in small or greater degrees, and we are to use that wisdom and see what God has given you and make, see what his grace has been to bring out that wisdom in your everyday life. So there is an awful lot of pondering to do. So can I ask, what sort of things would you be pondering? How does God show wisdom? How has that wisdom been shown in our lives? Mm -hmm. Um, it is a, it, it is really the foundation of all the the virtues. And without wisdom, you can't really order your life properly. So it's really the foundation of everything. So we ask first of all, God, come. You are the wisdom. You are wisdom itself. Mm -hmm. So please come, and give us wisdom and show us how to use it. Ah, so maybe this is why the O antiphons start with wisdom. It's actually the foundation for all the other virtues. And it helps us to order our lives. Hmm. I wonder where our lives might benefit from a little more order. Isaiah also really gives us quite a bit of colour and flavour that describes what true wisdom is actually like. It blends together counsel and power. So it seems to me that it offers us great insights that are also incredibly impactful. And it also blends knowledge with the fear of the Lord. My granddad used to use an interesting, pretty colourful turn of phrase, actually. And he would say that with all of our learning, we need to be really careful that we don't become clever devils. <laughs> so whilst there's nothing wrong with learning and knowledge, this only becomes wisdom when it stays within the boundaries of honouring God and all of his ways too. And then the final flavour from Isaiah for today is that true wisdom 
doesn't judge a book by its cover, as it were. And it doesn't depend on gossip and stories. I wonder how often we allow our decisions to be based on the things that we see and maybe on hearsay rather than on true wisdom. So in a time of quiet now, let's allow Jesus to come to us as wisdom in the depth of our hearts. And we're close today using the words of the O Antiphon once again. O wisdom, coming forth from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from one end to the other, mightily and sweetly ordering all things. Come and teach us the way of prudence. Amen. See you tomorrow.